Hey guys, it's Rebecca popping in here real quick to tell you about my All Access Pass. You pay one time and get access to all of my past and future PDF patterns for the lifetime of my blog. To learn more, check out the All Access Pass in the video description below if you're watching from YouTube. If you're enjoying this video from my blog, just click the All Access Pass link in the main menu. Alright guys, enjoy the tutorial! This is Rebecca from YarnAndChai.com and today I'm going to teach you how to make this adorable little rustic pumpkin. This pattern is an easy level pattern. It's written in American Standard terms. The finished size of my pumpkin is three inches tall by four and a half inches wide. Now, if you use a DK weight yarn like I did, your pumpkin's probably going to come out to about that size. The nice thing about this pattern is that you can also choose a thicker yarn and follow the same pattern and end up with a larger pumpkin. Now for my sample, I used about 80 yards of, like I said, a number three DK weight yarn. For the sample, I used Yarn B Must Be Merino in the colors Rust and Gold. You're also going to need a three and a half millimeter hook, which is an e-hook. But really, all you need to make sure is that the hook that you're using is about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half smaller than the recommended hook on the yarn packaging, okay? So basically what we're going for is just a nice tight fabric for our pumpkin. So gauge for this pumpkin is really not too crucial. I'm going to give you a gauge in case you want to make sure maybe you're worried that you won't have enough yarn or you want your pumpkin to turn out the exact same size as mine. You can use this gauge. It is eight rows of 21 half double crochets worked in the third loops equals four inches square. So again, unless you're concerned about having enough yarn to complete your pumpkin, the gauge is really not all that important here. And as I said, you can even choose a thicker yarn like a number four or a number five yarn um, and just make sure that your hook size is just a little bit smaller than what that particular yarn recommends and you will be able to use this pattern. Now your pumpkin will turn out larger and you'll also need more yards. So if you're gonna use a thicker yarn than I did, make sure that you have enough yardage for that, okay? You're also going to need a yarn needle. You're gonna need some polyester fiber fill, which is stuffing. You're gonna need some kind of quick drying glue. So you could use a glue stick. I'm actually using this uh, Gorilla Super Glue and it has a nozzle and a brush. And I really like using the brush for crafts, so that's the glue that I'm using. But any fast drying glue will work fine. You're going to want to find some cinnamon sticks, which you can probably find in the fall craft area of your craft store. But if you can't find them at the craft store, you can always just buy cinnamon sticks from your grocery store, usually in the seasonings aisle. You're also going to need some covered wire or something else to decorate the top of the pumpkin. You could use twine or raffia yarn, um, lots of different options. If you want to add like little curly cues or a little bow or something like that, make sure you have something there to decorate it with. One last thing before we begin, please read the video description below if there have been any changes or error corrections to this pattern since the publishing of this video tutorial, they'll be listed in the video description under pattern updates. Alright, let's get started. To start this pattern, we're going to begin with a magic circle. Now, if you have never done a magic circle before, I do have a more in-depth video tutorial explaining my method for it, and you can find that in the description below. If you have already done it, go ahead and do your chosen method, or you can follow along with what I'm doing. So I'm just draping my yarn, this is the cut end, over my hand and wrapping it around two fingers to form an X. I'm gonna put my thumb there to hold it in place, and then I'm going to put my hook through and grab the yarn, and then use my fingers to pull this down, okay? Again, if you are not familiar with this technique, you can go back and watch the video that I made specifically on how to create a magic circle. Okay, so we made our magic circle and we're just gonna chain one, 
and that's the beginning of our pumpkin. For round one, we're going to put 14 single crochets into this magic circle. So we're just going to go one, this is single crochets, and I'm putting my hook through the loop around both strands of yarn to make these single crochets. So go ahead and put 14 into your magic circle. Okay, so I have 14 single crochets in my magic circle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my starting tail here and I'm going to pull it gently until the single crochet on this side touches the single crochet on this side. I'm not going to pull it any tighter than that though, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Okay, so I have these um, brought together now, and what I'm going to do is I am going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the very first single crochet that I made, okay? And what I have now is this circle that has a hole in the middle. Now normally, when you're making something with a magic circle, you're gonna end up closing this up really tight. Like if you were making a hat, you wouldn't want a big hole at the top of your hat, of course, so you would pull this really tight. We're not gonna do that for this pattern because this is actually where our stem is going to go, so we want to leave that open, okay? So now what we're going to do for round two is we're going to chain one. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. We're chaining one, and we're going to put three single crochets in each stitch around. Now, if you have not done this before, what this does is it creates a very wavy circle because we are really crowding the stitches in. It can be a little bit tricky to see sometimes, but we're just gonna make sure we take our time and make sure that we put three single crochets in every single stitch around. So that's one, two, three, in the first stitch and then we're going to go to the next one. One, two, three, and then to the next one. And we're just going to do this all the way around until we have a total of 42 stitches, okay? So go ahead, go all the way around your circle, and then when you're done, count up your stitches to make sure that you have 42. Okay, so this is the end of round two, and as you can see, I've got this really wavy circle that would never lay flat, and that's exactly what we want because that is gonna help contribute to just the natural look of a pumpkin, which is not completely flat. Okay, so at the end of round two, we are going to go ahead and join again with a slip stitch to the top of the very first single crochet, okay? Now that is the final round of our pumpkin. What we're going to do now is move on to the body of the pumpkin, and we're going to be working in vertical rows, attaching our yarn to round two with slip stitches as we go. This may be a new technique to you. Um, if you have made some of my hat patterns, such as uh, the Malia beanie or the Malia slouch, this was the method that I used to build those hats. So if you've made those, this is going to seem familiar. Otherwise, you might be learning something new. Okay, so what we're going to do with our hook still attached is we are going to chain 27. So go ahead and chain 27. Okay, and what we're gonna do now for row one, we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So the loops on your hook do not count. This would be the first 
set of loops from the first chain and this is the second chain and we're just going to go ahead and work into the back loop because it's the easiest and it doesn't really make any difference in this situation okay so what we're going to do here is we are single crocheting in the second chain from the hook and then we're going to half double crochet into each of the next 24 chains okay so yarn over insert yarn over pull through yarn over and draw through all three loops on your hook for a half double crochet we're going to do that 24 times and after you've done that 24 times, you should have one chain remaining down at the end there. So go ahead and half double crochet 24 times. Okay, so that was 24 half double crochets. I have one chain left, and for that last chain, I am going to put a single crochet into that very last chain, okay? So this is where it gets fun. The next part of the instructions for row one say slip stitch into the first single crochet from round two, the stitch on which your chain 27 was built. Okay, so all we're doing here is we are slip stitching into this single crochet from round two, okay? Right here down at the base of the chain Go ahead and slip stitch into both loops like that. And then we are also going to slip stitch into the next single crochet from round two. So we're going to go into the next one as well. Slip stitch. All right, so we have a total of 26 stitches along this line here plus our two slip stitches along round two, and that is the completion of row one. For row two, you're going to chain one and turn your work. And what we're going to do, the instructions say skipping over the two slip stitches that you just did, we're gonna single crochet in the first stitch, and that's the first stitch of this row that we've got going on here, okay? so. Let me show you exactly how to know where to put your hook. This set of loops right here is the chain one. So we know that that doesn't count as a stitch, right? And we also know that we're supposed to skip over the two slip stitches. So these two stitches right here, this one here, and this one here, these are the loops created by the two slip stitches. We're skipping over those, and we're putting our first stitch into the next set of loops, which is right here, okay? So we're going to single crochet into that first set of loops on the row. After that, the instructions say to half double crochet into the third loop of each of the next 24 stitches. Now let me show you how to find the third loop. We know that this is our next stitch right here. This is the back loop and the front loop. To find your third loop, you're just going to turn your work a bit, and this loop that's laying right underneath the front loop, again, that's back loop, front loop, third loop, right here. We're going to yarn over because this is a half double crochet and insert our hook into that third loop. It should be relatively easy to insert your hook and that's how you know you're in the right spot. Okay, yarn over and go ahead and complete a half double crochet. So we're going to do that again and once you've done the first one, the next, it's, it's much easier to find the third loop after you've done one because it's basically looking right at you now that you've turned the fabric the way that it needs to go. So our third loop is right here and we know that, we know that because the next stitch is right here. Back loop, front loop, third loop, okay? So yarn over and complete a half double crochet into that third loop loop. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a few of these and then I will turn it over and show you what we are creating. Okay, so if you turn your work over you can see that this delicate raised braid is happening on the other side of the work and that is exactly what happens when you work into the third loop of a half double crochet because you are forcing those top loops onto the front of the fabric, okay? So it has just this really pretty braided look down it. 
and that is going to serve as sort of the ridges for our pumpkin. So go ahead and half double crochet into the third loops 24 times and you should have one stitch remaining at the end. Okay, so if you have half double crocheted 24 times, you'll have one stitch left and it's a little bit hard to see. It's just that little single crochet at the end there and you really have to kind of turn your fabric a bit to be able to see it. But you need to single crochet into that last stitch of the row like that. Okay, that's probably the toughest stitch to get to. Okay, so we've got this pretty braided look down the row here. And now we're gonna move on to row three. So rows three and four are going to be our repeat rows. And they're almost exactly the same as one and two with just one tiny difference when we get back to this end. And so I'll tell you about that when we get there. So what we're gonna do for row three is chain one and turn we're going to single crochet into that first stitch of the row and then we're going to half double crochet into the third loop of each of the next 24. So go ahead and half double crochet into the third loops of all but that last stitch. Okay, so I just finished my 24th half double crochet and I'm going to single crochet into the last stitch of the row. Hopefully you're counting your stitches so you know that you are right where you need to be. Okay, so at the end of this row we're going to go ahead and slip stitch into each of the next two stitches from round two. So this is where it's just slightly different from the first time that we came back. The first time we just slip stitched right to the base of the chain that we had made. And this time we are moving to the next available single crochet from round two. So if you look at this really carefully, and you do have to be careful with this, you might look at these loops and think that they are the next open one because this almost looks like it's attached over in this direction and these don't have anything. But if you look really closely, you can see that that set of loops actually has something inside of it. It's hard for you to see it probably on this camera with this tiny yarn, but if you look at your own, you're gonna be able to see, if you look really closely, that already has been worked into. Make sure that you're not working into the same single crochet twice, okay? You need to move to the next available one. And if it helps you, you can always, and what we're doing is slip stitching here, if it helps you, you can always use a, there we go, my yarn got a little bit tangled. You can use a stitch marker, and I'll show you how you can do that in just a moment, okay? So um, for slip stitch into the next two stitches of round two, so I slip stitch into one, and I am slip stitching into the next one now. Now I know that this is the one that I just worked into. This is the next available one. If you want to, you can put a stitch marker into that next available one right now while, while it's really easy to see and you know exactly which one it is. And that way when you come back down the next time for the next pass, you'll know that you're going to slip stitch right where that stitch marker is. So that is totally up to you if you want to do that, if you're having a hard time seeing which stitches have been worked into. Okay, so we slip stitched into each of the next available stitches from round two, and now we are going to move on to row four. We're going to chain one and turn our work. And we're going to do exactly what we did in row two two. Okay, so these are the loops created by the chain one. These are the loops created by the two slip stitches. We know that this is our very first stitch here. Okay, it's also the stitch that does not have a third loop attached to it because it was a single crochet. These are all half double crochets, which is why they have that third loop. This one's missing one, so that's another way that you can know that that is where your first stitch goes which is a single crochet, okay? Single crochet into that one and then half double crochet into the next 24. And again, when you are done with this row, there should be 
And again, when you are done with these half double crochets, there should be one little stitch remaining at the end of the row. Okay, that's my 24th half double crochet. And I'm just going to go ahead and put my single crochet in the final stitch. And there we go. So mine is looking a little bit wonky because I'm not crocheting in my normal position, which is usually cross-legged sitting on a couch watching Netflix. And crocheting on a video is a little bit different. So it, yours hopefully isn't looking quite as uneven as mine. But as you can see, we're forming the ridges that are going to become the sides of our pumpkin. And it's so pretty. So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to go back and repeat rows three and four, just moving down and up and down and up and down and up all the way around this circle, okay? So you're going to just keep moving all the way around, slip stitching into the stitches from this round until you get back to this point. So I want you to go ahead and do that. That's for rows five through 42. Repeat rows three and four all the way along round two. And after that, we will join back together. All right, so coming back together at this point, you should be finished with your 42 rows. And this is what we have. Here's down here is our magic circle area. And then we've got 42 rows of ribbing, which goes all the way around that magic circle. Now, before we seam up the edges together, we are gonna go ahead and single crochet a bottom edge round. Now I'm saying bottom, even though this is at the top, um, this is technically the top of our pumpkin where the magic circle is. So when I say bottom, I'm talking about this edge here that does not have the magic circle. So along the bottom, we are going to single crochet what we're calling the bottom edge round, okay? So all we're going to do for this is we're going to chain one, and then we're going to single crochet in each end row. So we know that each time we see ribbing, it is two rows between each ribbing. So from this ribbing to this ribbing, that's two, four, six, eight. Okay, so we can call this a row and the space between ribbings a row, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and start by putting a single crochet into just as close as we can get it to the chain one that we just made, okay? And what I'm doing, as you can see, there's really no good place to put your hook. Um, when we do edging on the edge of rows like this, it's not like single crocheting into something like this, where you know exactly where to insert your hook under those loops. You just kind of have to eyeball it. And I just try to get as little of the um, fabric above my hook as I can, okay? So this is the next area on top of this row of ribbing that we're going to go for. And so I'm just seeing this right here. I'm gonna insert my hook and we're gonna call that two, okay? And then we're gonna move on to the middle for number three. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert my hook under a strand of yarn there and do a single crochet and now I'm back to the ribbing sticking out so I'm gonna go ahead and put my hook there and I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that process all the way across the bottom edge of the pumpkin and when you're done you should have 42 of these single crochets across this bottom edge so go ahead and do that Okay, so now I have this edging all the way around the bottom of the pumpkin. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet that I did. So I'm going to bring these together as though I were working in a round. And with my hook still inserted, I'm just going to insert it into the first single crochet that I made and do a slip stitch. Okay, so now I have this pumpkin with the opening, but it's connected kind of loosely up here. 
And now we are going to fasten off leaving a very long tail. If you are using DK weight number three light yarn like I am, you're gonna wanna do about a yard of tail. If you are doing a larger pumpkin, then you're definitely going to want to cut more. So just make sure that you have ample yarn to work with because we're going to be using this finishing tail for actually quite a few different things that have to do with finishing and shaping our pumpkin, okay? So after you've cut your yarn, you can go ahead and draw that long tail through. Okay, so what we've got here is the opening, the join, and a very long finishing tail. All right. So this next series of steps is just going to help us to um, shape and seam and finish up our pumpkin. So it's a lot of little steps that uh, work together to make this into a pumpkin. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to measure for the stem, okay? I have a piece of craft cinnamon stick. And by craft cinnamon stick, I just mean I got it in the craft section, um, the fall craft section of Hobby Lobby. You can also buy this in little jars at the grocery store, but you are going to pay a lot more at the grocery store. Or you can buy them in a larger pack like this, probably at your craft store, especially at this time of year. Okay, so what I did to cut this, I just scored it with a... Um, serrated knife and then I took some really strong kitchen shears and I just snapped it and it came apart pretty easily. So you might have to experiment a little bit with um, the tools that you have in your kitchen to get that to where you want it to be. So what we need to do right now is we need to make sure that this hole is going to be nice and snug around our cinnamon stick. So go ahead and stick it in there. This isn't um, the time that we're going to keep this in here for good but um, we're just gonna use it to shape it right now. Now I'm gonna um, tell you a secret. I've actually already done this step. I did it off camera because I wasn't even thinking. I just went ahead and did it. So here's what I did. I should still have my starting tail. It's either on the inside of the pumpkin or on the outside. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, so you need to take your starting tail and put your cinnamon stick in and then pull your starting tail so that that magic circle closes up around the cinnamon stick, okay? So it just needs to be nice and snug. Now we're gonna glue this in place at the end, so don't worry if it's still removable, but go ahead and um, pull that tight so that the magic circle closes around the cinnamon stick, and then you can take your cinnamon stick out and go ahead and weave in your starting tail, okay? So as you can see, I don't have a starting tail because I've already done that, but it fits my cinnamon stick perfectly, okay? So now I'm gonna set that aside. And the next step is seaming up the side of the pumpkin. And for this part, you're going to need your yarn needle. So go ahead and thread that long finishing tail through your yarn needle. And I'm going to teach you how to seam this up so that you can't even hardly find the seam. Okay, so what you need to do is hold your pumpkin so that the magic circle is on the left and you want your last row of half double crochets to actually be on the top and you want your starting chain, which is this tighter thing right here, to be underneath. So I know looking at this that I actually need to turn this inside out. And now, of course, this pumpkin is reversible, so inside out, right side out, doesn't really matter too much. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I want your half double crochet row to be on top here and your starting chain row to be down below. And that's gonna help you to be able to follow along with my seaming tutorial a little bit easier, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do here once you have it situated the, the way that it needs to be, is you're gonna begin by running your yarn needle up through the first chain. So go ahead and just locate where that first chain is. And you're gonna run it up through the single crochet stitch that started each one of your ribbing rows, okay? And you can, again, locate that um, single crochet stitch because it doesn't have a third loop this one has a third loop, so I know that this is a half double crochet stitch, and this one does not have a third loop. So I know that that is my first stitch of the row. And I'm just gonna go ahead and run my yarn needle through that, 
and pull my yarn tight and it is a little bit of a pain when you're working with a tail this long so you just want to kind of pull slowly so that it doesn't get caught on itself okay so that's step one the next step here and this is the one that we're going to repeat all the way down your your uh, tail should be up here now you're going to come down through the third loop of the first half double crochet to the left of this okay so I know that these are the top loops of that half double crochet and so that third loop is going to be right here at this point you should be pretty pro at finding that third loop so come down through that third loop and across to the chain across from it and you're gonna pull your yarn through okay and then you're going to do the exact same thing again in the next third loop and the next chain. You're going to pull that through. And so you can see as I'm tightening it that that tail is laying over the chain stitch and that's fine. That's just how we want it. And then move to the next one and you're just going to do the same thing all the way down until you have that one last stitch remaining over here which is a single crochet so go ahead and seam up all of your half double crochets using the third loop okay so that's my last half double crochet and I've got this single crochet here at the very end so I'm just going to go ahead and go through the front loop of that and across to the chain. It's really not a science to it. You just want to make sure that you get that last stitch so that there's not a hole in that part of your pumpkin. Okay, and now at this point we are going to run our yarn just under a nearby thread and tie a knot right here because we are going to continue using this finishing tail my yarn is getting so curly right now okay so I'm just tying a knot here it's a little hard to see with a super long tail what I'm doing but we're gonna be using this finishing tail for a few more steps and we don't want this seam to pull in and get all crunched up when we continue uh, yanking around this thing okay so go ahead and tie a knot there to make sure that that doesn't happen and then open it up and take a look at that pretty seam now I don't know about you but I can barely tell where that seam is I would really have to search for it if I had not just done it so pretty cool with the third loop st stitch that you can make such a nice seam like that all right so we're still not fastening off this yarn the next step is cinching stuffing and closing up the bottom part of the pumpkin so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn this fabric inside out right side out whatever you want to call it um, whatever it is we just want the finishing tail to be running through the inside of the pumpkin okay and so what you're going to do now is run your yarn needle through one of these stitches. It doesn't matter which one. Just run it through and bring all of that excess yarn that's coming from inside the pumpkin. Bring that all up. You don't want to yank it. You can leave this just a little bit loose in here. But you're going to bring that up and then you're going to tie a knot at this point as well so that again we're not yanking on the fabric of the pumpkin as we continue working with this finishing tail okay so what you've got here is you've got your uh, finishing tail coming through the pumpkin you have a knot down there where you knotted it after you were done seaming and then you have a knot up here and now all we're going to do is we're going to run our yarn needle every three stitches in and out all the way around the pumpkin and that's how we're going to seam uh, cinch this shut okay so we're starting on this one so one two three and just put your yarn needle through that single crochet okay and then one two three back out that one count three more one two three one, two, three. After you've done a small handful of them, you can pull that yarn through. And then just keep going all the way around the perimeter of your pumpkin. 
every three stitches. Okay, so I am back where I started. I'm just gonna pull this the rest of the way through and before we cinch this shut, we need our stuffing, so we're gonna go ahead and stuff our pumpkin. So for this, I'm just using this polyester fiber fill. And you're just gonna start stuffing it into your pumpkin. Make sure your uh, finishing tail doesn't get stuck in that pumpkin. Go ahead and put it in, and I always find that I end up needing more of this than I think I'm going to need. So just make sure that you get your pumpkin nice and firm and shaped the way that you want it to be. I like to kind of reach my fingers in there and really work with it, push it out to the edges, and then add more. And just keep doing that, working with it until it is as stuffed as you want it to be. Okay, I think that's probably good for me. I'm just gonna go ahead and work that a little bit more just to really loosen it up. And then I'm going to take my finishing tail and I'm just going to pull this closed. And voila, we have a pumpkin shape. All right, so what I'm gonna do here to secure this is I'm just gonna weave my yarn needle across this hole and grab a strand or two of yarn and pull nice and tight and then I'm gonna go in the other direction so I'm gonna grab some yarn from this side take my yarn needle across grab some yarn from the opposite side pull that nice and tight and then I'm just gonna do it one more time and tie a knot now you can always come back to this at the end if you find that after your next steps um, that hole opens up a little bit, you can always come back and just reinforce it even more by going across it. For right now, we're gonna call this good and we're going to put a knot in it. All right, so now we have a stuffed pumpkin. You might think we're done, but we actually have just a little bit more left to do because with a pumpkin, the bottom part or the bottom and the top part tend to kind of sink inward. Now, doesn't that look even more like a pumpkin? Okay, so I'm gonna teach you how to get that shaping on your pumpkin. It's really simple. All right, so take a look at the top of your pumpkin. This is the side that had the magic circle in it, and you can see all of these dots, these holes. These are the holes that were created when we moved on to round two. And do you remember when we put three single crochets in each single crochet and it made a gap because we were crowding so many stitches in? So if you count these, you should have 14 of them because we started with 14 stitches. So these are the holes I'm gonna be referencing when I teach you how to shape this pumpkin, all right? Okay, I still have my finishing tail threaded and my yarn is coming out the bottom of the pumpkin. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to stick this into the pumpkin and I'm going to come out the top and I'm aiming for one of these holes. First time you do it, it does not matter which hole you start with. So just aim for one of those holes might have to really push your pumpkin in because um, my yarn needle is not as tall as my pumpkin so I really have to and just kind of smush it to get it to work. Uh, the taller your yarn needle, the easier this step is going to be. So you're gonna pull that through and you can pull on it a little bit to see how it kind of brings in your pumpkin, but at this point it's not gonna stay on its own because there's nothing to keep it there. So we're just gonna continue. What I'm doing here, this is the one that I came out of, so I'm gonna to move to the next stitch to the right. I'm going to reinsert my yarn needle and then I'm gonna follow this down so this is about where that hole was. So I'm just gonna follow that down. And I'm now aiming for just about right in the center of the pumpkin, but right in this little area here. So if this is dead center, I just kinda want it to be right about here. And the reason that we're not going for dead center is because we want to make sure that we get some yarn um, hooked onto this yarn needle to help with the shaping. Okay, so pull that through. As you can see, it's pulling through on the top here. All right. 
Now, keeping an eye on this, see if you pull this, the top of the pumpkin's gonna come in a little bit and it's gonna start to kinda stay on its own a little. So I know that I just went from this hole to this hole and now I'm aiming for this one when I come back up. So going right in, right where it came out, but just make sure that there's at least a strand or two of yarn between where you came out and where you're going back in because you need to make sure that you're grabbing some yarn here as you pull up, okay? Go ahead and, ooh, got it on the first try there, okay. Bring it out, this is the next hole to the right. So I've used these two holes and now I'm in the next hole to the right. I'm gonna pull it up. And now as you can see, I start to pull this, that shaping is starting to hold, okay? So now I'm going to go to the next hole to the right and go down, I'm just gonna follow this down and shoot for right towards the center, but on that side. And so as you can see, all I'm doing here is I'm going around each circle until I get back to the start. So you should be making seven passes, full round trip passes through this pumpkin to hit all 14 of those holes at the top. And the more careful you are with this, so you're really paying attention to how much you're pulling it down um, because you wanna be equal all the way around with the amount of pressure that you're doing when you pull this and you cinch it down because um, that's going to make your pumpkin look nice and even. And then as long as you're being careful with where your yarn needle comes out here, you need to make sure that you are going evenly around the circle and not jumping around. So as you do that, you're going to start to see that this pumpkin is being drawn inward nice and evenly around the entire thing. Okay, so go ahead and finish that and then I will show you how to finish this up for good. Okay, so my pumpkin is nice and cinched inward and if you want you can kind of mess with um, the stuffing a little bit to kind of even things out. But all in all, I think we ended up with a pretty nice pumpkin here. What do you think? Okay, so hopefully yours is looking pretty good too. And what we're going to do now if you're comfortable with what's going on on the bottom, it doesn't look like stuffing is going to come out or anything like that, you can go ahead and tie a couple of knots with your yarn and then fasten off. If you want to at this point, you can always run your yarn across and then across again the opposite direction if you just really want to make sure that that got closed up really good and then pull it to just continue to cinch it a little bit more. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run it under some yarn and I'm going to tie a knot and then I'm going to do that again. If you want to, you can weave in this end. I'm just going to cut mine because I figure it's on the bottom of the pumpkin. It's not going anywhere. But if you want to be a good little crocheter, you can definitely weave that end in. That's probably the smarter thing to do. Okay, so we have our pumpkin now, and all we have left is to add that cute little stem and some covered wire for a little extra embellishment. This is the covered wire that I have. It's really flimsy. As you can see, I can bend it, and then I can unbend it really easily. So this is actually... Um, if I am making sure that this is like going up on a shelf somewhere and my kids aren't going to be playing with it, I'm okay with using this um, because I know nobody's going to be touching the curly cue, so it's going to be fine. If you think that that's going to be an issue or you want something that's a little bit more, um, it's going to stay in place forever, you could try tying some uh, raffia yarn around your stem into a little bow or you could take some twine and you know do a bow like that so it's totally up to you I love the look of the little curly cue though so that's what I'm gonna do alright so I'm just gonna take some of this out see if I can 
get some out without having to take the whole package apart. Okay, so I'm going to cut probably, I don't know, a foot and a half. And for this step, you're going to need a pencil or a pen or just something that has a long, um, even handle. So I'm going to be using this pencil. You're also going to need your stem and you're going to need some quick drying craft glue. I am using this Gorilla Super Glue with a brush and a nozzle because I love the brush. I love being able to brush it on. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I am going to wrap this around my cinnamon stick just a couple of times like that okay and then I'm going to remove it and I love this Gorilla Glue because it dries and you can't even see that it was there so what I'm doing here this goes really fast it starts to to bond so you're going to want to work quickly it's getting a little bit of this Gorilla Glue and I am going to um, towards kind of not the middle but not the base of it either because that part of that is going to be underneath our stuffing there so go ahead and put a little bit around and then you're going to put this back on make sure that you're not getting your fingers into that super glue and pull tight and just hold it there for about 10 seconds it says it takes for it to bond so just go ahead and hold it there until it's nice and secure. All right, I think we're good. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to wrap this yarn. <laughs> yarn. This is not yarn. This is covered wire. I'm just going to wrap this covered wire around the pencil all the way get that curl nice and close to the edge of the stick and then I'm just gonna remove the pencil okay so that's a curly cue and we're gonna do the same thing with the other side there we go cute right okay so this is going to go into our pumpkin like this. So all I need to do now is attach the cinnamon stick to the pumpkin and I'm going to use this glue again. And this time I'm going to go right to the yarn. I'm going to um, be a little bit more li liberal with my glue here and I'm just going to put it all along that magic circle. And I'm going to quickly stick that cinnamon stick down in there. And I'm really going to press it down and hold it for 10 seconds because I want it to go nice and in there. All right, and then I'm going to release it. And there we are. Our pumpkin is completely done and ready to be part of my fall decor. I don't know about you, but fall is my absolute favorite season. I live in Michigan and the leaves just get absolutely gorgeous and I just love it. I can't get enough of it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that your pumpkin turned out super cute. I would love to see them so make sure that you jump on Facebook or Instagram and you share those pumpkins either in our Facebook group or on my page or on Instagram. Just tag me at yarnandchai.design so that I can see all the cute things you do. Now I know my tribe and I know you guys are just going to come up with all kinds of really creative ways to change this up. Different things on the top and different kinds of yarns and stuff like that. So I just really can't wait to see what you guys do with it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that maybe you learned something. Be sure to check out my blog yarnandchai.com for lots more cute modern simple patterns and make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube because I've got tons more videos just like this. See you next time.